away for a while from external things, from the pleasures of the senses, from the arguments of the intellect, from the noise and the excitements of the world, and withdraw yourself into the inmost chamber of your heart, and there, free from the sacrilegious intrusions of all selfish desires, you will find a deep silence, a holy calm, a blissful repose, and if you will rest a while in that holy place, and will meditate there, the faultless eye of truth will open within you, and you will see things as they really are. This holy place within you is your real and eternal self. It is the divine within you, and only when you identify yourself with it can you be said to be clothed and in your right mind. It is the abode of peace, the temple of wisdom, the dwelling place of immortality. Apart from this inward resting place, this mount of vision, there can be no true peace, no knowledge of the divine, and if you can remain there for one minute, one hour, or one day, it is possible for you to remain there always. All your sins and sorrows, your fears and anxieties are your own, and you can cling to them, or you can give them up. Of your own accord you cling to your unrest. Of your own accord you can come to abiding peace. No one else can give up sin for you. You must give it up yourself. The greatest teacher can do no more than walk the way of life for himself and point it out to you. You yourself must walk it for yourself. You can obtain freedom and peace alone by your own efforts, by yielding up that which binds the soul and which is destructive of peace. The angels of divine peace and joy are always at hand, and if you do not see them or hear them and dwell with them, it is because you shut yourself out from them and prefer the company of the spirits of evil within you. You are what you will to be, what you wish to be, what you prefer to be. You can commence to purify yourself, and by so doing can arrive at peace, or you can refuse to purify yourself, and so remain with suffering. Step aside then, come out of the fret and the fever of life, away from the scorching heat of self, and enter the inward resting place, where the cooling airs of peace will calm, renew, and restore you. Come out of the storms of sin and anguish. Why be troubled and tempest-tossed when the haven of the peace of God is yours? Give up all self-seeking, give up self, and lo, the peace of God is yours. Subdue the animal within you, conquer every selfish uprising, every discordant voice, Transmute the base metals of your selfish nature into the unalloyed gold of love, and you shall realize the life of perfect peace. Thus subduing, thus conquering, thus transmuting, you will, O reader, while living in the flesh, cross the dark waters of mortality and reach that shore upon which the storms of sorrow never beat, and where sin and suffering and dark uncertainty cannot come. Standing upon that shore, holy, compassionate, awakened, and self-possessed, and glad with unending gladness, you will realize that never the spirit was born, the spirit will cease to be never. Never was time it was not. End and beginning are dreams. Birthless and deathless and changeless remaineth the spirit for ever. Death hath not touched it at all, dead though the house of it seems. You will then know the meaning of sin, of sorrow, of suffering, and that the end thereof is wisdom. You will know the cause and the issue of existence. And with this realization you will enter into rest, for this is the bliss of immortality, this the unchangeable gladness, this the untrammeled knowledge, undefiled wisdom and undying love. This, and this only, is the realization of perfect peace. O thou, who wouldst teach men of truth, hast thou passed through the desert of doubt? Art thou purged by the fires of sorrow? Hath Ruth the fiends of opinion cast out of thy human heart? Is thy soul so fair that no false thought can ever harbour there? O thou, who wouldst teach men of love, hast thou passed through the place of despair? Hast thou wept through the dark night of grief? 
Does it move, now freed from its sorrow and care, thy human heart to pitying gentleness, looking on wrong and hate and ceaseless stress? O thou